सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द सेशन सो लेट मी जस्ट चेक आर माई ऑडेबल इज द स्क्रीन क्लियर सो दैट वी कैन स्टार्ट द सेशन यस ओके माई डियर एसपेंट सो येस एवरी थिंग इज ओके एंड यू कैन लिसन टू मी आई कैन स्टार्ट द सेशन नाउ ओके सो येस लेट स्टार्ट द सेशन नाउ माई डियर एसपेंट्स ओके सो येस टूडे सेशन इज अबाउट द टॉपिक ऑफ एन अपर लिम सो आई हैव टेकन अन अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ एन अपर लिम दैट इज एक्जिला सो इन एक्जिला फॉर द टूडे सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन द बाउंड्रीज ऑफ द एक्जिला द कंटेंट्स ऑफ द एक्जिला एंड ऑल्सो अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट कंटेंट्स सर्टन ब्रीफ एक्सप्लेनेशन लाइक एक्जिलरी आर्ट्री एक्जिलरी वेन्स आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट अलॉन्ग विद इट्स ब्रांचेस रिलेशन एक्सटेंट कोर्स ओके so let's start with the topic before that uh, i would like to give you a general brief about the platform of an academy and about myself so myself dr mona lisa i have done my md in anatomy from arm force medical college pune and has got a total of 9 years of teaching experience for various competitive exams in the medical field when i am talking about the special class the features of special class is that it's an interactive session where the learners and the educators can interact among themselves polls are conducted and in this polls uh, you can participate which will be highly beneficial for you raise your hands get your doubts clear write itself when the session is going on never ever miss a session so once the session is finished you can also download the pdf notes this is an, uh, an additional benefit of uh, uh attending the session on special class platform you can also have the pdf notes anywhere anytime read from the top educators of anacademy platform now my dear um, aspirants today as i am taking the topic of uh, axilla clinical anatomy it uh, so firstly the gross anatomy has to be discussed the various clinical aspect related to the topic uh, will be continued uh, with the open house okay so what i will do i will complete the gross anatomy here i will complete the topic of gross anatomy here itself and when i am talking about the clinical uh, clinical aspect or clinical anatomy related to the topic i will discuss that on the open house so how you can attend the open house you have to download the anacademy app and thereafter you will get the link of my session and via that you can be uh, present uh, there and i will have the conversation with you so you can join me uh, by the link which will be provided on the anacademy app your own anacademy app so also the students who are watching the session for the first time or they are downloading the anacademy app for the first time they needs to unlock it so for that unlock code is anat10 which can be used by you okay now i would also like to give you the information today i am taking two special free sessions one as at 8 um one is the session 8 and another is the session 9th of high yield anatomy mcqs which i started in the last week of january itself actually always i take these kind of sessions every two months uh, i take so i as we know that neat pg examination has been um, extended but that doesn't mean that our uh, Uh, our daily sessions or our mcq solving sessions should be finished it should be at the same pace if you are wa wanting a uh, a great rank that is very important a higher rank if you want you have to be uh, not lose the pace which we are uh, continuing with the study so maintain it and give more attention to the topic which is left behind so my dear aspirants again i would like to tell the students who are watching the free session for the first time they can use my code and add and unlock it uh, now my dear aspirants i would also like to inform you about 19th feb all india mock test so all india mock test uh, for the neat pg examination is there which can be assessed by you get enroll so get enroll for this special free test so this is again a test on the free platform so you can get enroll again by using the code anat10 now let's talk about the plus subscription when i am talking about the plus subscription it is a uh, uh, it is a platform you can assess both live and recorded version you can study from india stop educators you can be uh, uh, present uh, for the various test and quizzes which will be highly beneficial for you study on the device of your choice assess more than 25000 mcqs and you can also uh, have a explanation of each and every mcqs which is taken uh, given by the top educators of anacademy platform dr kost So hello dr kostu welcome to the session dear and you can also be provided with printed notes of anacademy 
uh, hello dear and when I'm talking about iconic subscription you can have the merging of Unacademy and prep ladder both that means you can assess the best of two platform to get a better rank in the competitive exam clinical integrated sessions uh, essentials video lectures from the dream team of the prep ladder notes Q bank uh, bank can be assessed rapid revision and treasure dream notes of the prep ladder so all these can be assessed by you use this code to get an extra discount of 10% now, my dear aspirants, I would also like to congratulate uh, the toppers of FMG December session 2021. I give uh, my best wishes to them and I'm very happy to share this image with you. So, you, uh, I just want that they should also target their next exam and the NEET PG exam in the first go with a good rank. Now, this is the pricing detail which I want to show where you can have a comparison done between the plus and the iconic subscription have a look and then decide which subscription you want to take use the code and add 10 for additional 10 percent discount so an extra 10 percent discount will be given to you by using the code and add 10 so just go for it it will be highly beneficial here and also i want to tell that uh, Updated highly effective Q bank uh, is there, question bank is there on the platform of One Academy. Go assess it, and uh, more than 25,000 high yield clinical MCQs are there, which are based on the latest pattern of examination and also includes a detailed explanation. So use the code NAT10 and get 10% off and take the benefit of solving all these MCQs. So let's start with the today's topic. What is today's topic? Is axilla. So in normal terms, when I'm talking about axilla. In normal terms, uh, how uh, we are uh, locating this location. So actually, this is called as armpit. Okay, so uh, this is an armpit which is resembling a uh, truncated four-sided pyramid. So what is armpit? So it is exactly present. Uh, if we talk about an armpit, it is a fat-filled pyramidal-shaped structure which is exactly lying between the upper part of the arm and the chest of the chest wall so this is the upper part of the arm so medial aspect of upper part of the arm and that of the chest wall in between uh, that we have got a fat filled pyramidal shape structure which is called as the armpit so in for a layman and for a general understanding the armpit is same as the axilla and uh, in general terms you just uh, uh, be uh, locate it between the upper part of the arm and that of the side of chest wall so it is a fat filled space fat filled pyramidal space the uh, it is a pyramid shape uh, space and exactly this pyramid shape space is situated between it is exactly located between upper part of arm and side of chest wall now why it is very important for us to study uh, axilla because it is containing axillary vessels and it is containing brachial plexus and the branches of brachial plexus. So it is very important that we should uh, study axilla in detail. Now actually axilla is a truncated four sided pyramid and it is having an apex, it is having base and it is having the four walls. So it, in this diagram you can see when I enlarge this uh, area, so this pyramidal shape structure which you are seeing, this space which you are seeing is the location of the armpit or the axilla and uh, if I talk about its boundary, it is very important to know the details. So in, it's a four sided pyramid, it's a four sided pyramid. And this four sided pyramidal structure is having apex, it is having base, it is having anterior wall, posterior wall, medial wall and lateral wall, medial wall and lateral wall. What I told you that this session which I am taking now, the gross anatomy is all targeted for the first year aspirants. Why? Because they want to study uh, the topic in much more detail than the aspirants who are um, going for the competitive exam. So those who want to revise, they can also have the conceptual understanding. But I want to tell the aspirants that those who want to understand it, okay, from the very beginning, those who are in the first year or just have taken admission in MBBS course or their result is out and they are starting the preparation, so they can continue uh, listening to these sessions or the second year aspirants can revise it because slightly elaborate I will go because competitive MCQ series are and uh, uh, the most difficult topic is there on the special class plus class and also on the let's crack neat pg this is uh, the future doctor an academy future doctor platform is a platform where uh, we will go with the conceptual study and also the theory part will be covered so that you can target a better mark in your university exam
okay so this is four sided pyramid now i want to elaborate each of this um, apex boundary in the detail so first thing which i want to explain is the apex okay so my dear aspen this is the apex as you can see if uh, so first thing which you can appreciate very nicely this pyramidal shape structure which is seen to you this whole space which you are seeing here is the is the is the this whole space pyramidal structure is the axilla now here if i talk about uh, apex this is the apex which is going towards the cervical region so apex of this will be the apex okay this is the apex so apex is targeted towards if you want i can slightly enlarge this image also so what you can see apex is targeted towards the neck region or the cervical region when i am talking about the medial wall the medial wall is more extended towards the chest so it is uh, covered by the ribs and the ribs are covered by the muscle that is serratus anterior muscle so this is the medial wall that is medial wall is formed by the lateral aspect of the chest wall now if i talk about anterior wall if i talk about uh, anterior wall the anterior wall will be so we have got two so uh, if we talk about the anterior wall the anterior wall will be formed by the pectoral region okay pectoral region so this is the anterior wall and just posterior to anterior wall actually this is an anterior view so uh, just to make you understand just posterior to it will lie the posterior wall so i click uh, for example if upper part the part which you are seeing in the posterior aspect will be the posterior wall which is covered by the anterior wall basically and the lateral wall so the lateral wall if i talk about lateral wall this is exactly the lateral wall which is formed by the upper aspect of the arm and we have got also the base so this is what this is the base this is the base so i think this is giving you an idea of pyramidal shape structure having all these uh, anterior wall medial wall so this is giving you an idea of all the walls that is anterior wall medial wall and the posterior wall now what i want you to explain each wall in the detail and after that i will also show you the cadaveric image so let's talk about firstly the apex so let me tell you about firstly the apex of axilla now if i talk about apex of axilla the apex of axilla is is actually having a, a triangular uh, boundary so it is having a triangular shape and it is having a triangular boundary so uh, like you can also palpate in your own body anteriorly it is bounded by this clavicle posteriorly this bone is scapula so posteriorly scapula anteriorly is the clavicle and when i talk about medially it will be the ribs so the first rib so let's write about the apex of the axilla actually apex of the axilla is also called as cervico axillary canal why cervico axillary canal because apex of the axilla is directed towards the uh, cervical region the neck region so it is also called as cervico axillary canal okay triangular space boundaries let's talk about the boundaries so the boundaries is formed by in front it is bounded by clavicle behind it is bounded by upper border of scapula behind it is bounded by upper border of scapula and medially it is bounded by medially it is bounded by outer border of first rib outer border of first rib okay so this is all about the boundaries i would like to show you an image for it for your better understanding so let's focus on the cervical axillary canal see here so this is exactly so if i enlarge this diagram so you can clearly so it's quite visible only no need to enlarge i think okay so see here now you can see here this is the outer border of the first rib okay this is the outer border of the first rib which is forming its medial boundary now this is the superior posterior uh, posteriorly bounded by the superior aspect of the scapula and anteriorly you can see this is bounded by the clavicle anteriorly it is bounded by the clavicle so in this diagram you can clearly appreciate 
In this diagram, you can clearly appreciate the boundaries of this triangular space, which is called as the apex of axilla. So yes, my dear aspirants, we have done with the apex of the axilla. Now I would like to tell you about the base. So let's talk about the base. Actually, here, let me just, uh, can you see here the triangular area which is highlighted in the green color? So exactly this triangular area is the uh, is the axillary region and I uh, today's session is about the whole uh, walls of the axillary region and about uh, the contents of the axillary region. So in this diagram, let me just give you an elaborate. So we will talk about the base. So in this diagram, you can see here these parts are the serratus anterior muscle, which is covering these part are serratus anterior muscle, which is covering the chest lateral aspect. So uh, the, here serratus anterior muscle is basically, which is having long thoracic nerve as its nerve supply is basically, uh, it's basically forming the medial bone. Here we have got, uh, here we have got these are the muscles of upper uh, arm and these muscles are uh, biceps and coracobrachialis and also this is forming the lateral wall. So yes, this forming the lateral wall and the already talked about the apex posterior, few muscle fibers, these all muscles which you are seeing which is uh, forming the posterior aspect and lying on the posterior aspect of the back. That is the teres major, subscapularis and the latissimus dorsi muscle. Okay, so here you can see the um, subscapularis muscle is there. This is the part of latissimus dorsi muscle. Okay, anteriorly it has been removed. To show you the reason of axilla, the anterior muscle has been removed. Okay, anterior muscle has been removed. So, okay, this is the view and many of the students who are seeing this image for the first time may be confused by seeing this image. So, what I want, just locate that this is the area of the armpit which is having um, uh, yellow color are the nerves, co uh, yellow colors are the nerves that is brachial plexus and red color is the artery and blue color structure which has been uh, dissected out, cutted out, it's the vein, axillary vein. So don't worry, don't understand the boundaries here. Firstly, let me give you, uh, let me explain you the boundaries in schematic diagram and then I will come to uh, a cadaveric image and this image. Is it okay? I think it will be difficult for the first year aspirant. So let me move firstly with the base. So let me write about the base base of axilla when i am talking about the base of axilla actually uh, the base of axilla means the lower end of the axilla it means lower end of the axilla and the lower end of axilla is formed by the lower end of axilla is formed by axillary fascia okay now my dear aspirants, uh, it's formed by the axillary fascia, actually base is corresponding to the hollow space which is bounded anteriorly by anterior axillary fold and we know that anterior wall or anterior axillary fold is basically formed by pectoralis major muscle, posterior axillary fold is formed by latissimus dorsi teres major muscle. So base of axilla is a hollow space, hollow space bounded by anterior axillary fold and posterior axillary fold and posterior axillary fold okay so this is uh, bounded by anterior and posterior axillary fold this is the uh, base of the axilla which is having the following boundaries okay now and uh, we know that anterior axillary fold is formed by pectoralis major, posterior axillary fold is formed by latissimus dorsi. So uh, for that explanation, I would like to show you a transverse section. So my dear aspirants, this is the, this diagram is transverse section of axilla. For your university exam, if the question comes about the axilla, you have to make this diagram. You have to make this diagram where you have to show the boundaries. This is the similar diagram which you will uh, make in your examination and you have to understand the boundaries of axilla along with the contents of the axilla. So when I am talking about its boundaries, my dear aspirants, uh, so its medial boundary. So see here, medially what I told you, the ribs lie. So medially you can see here, this is the rib. This is the ribs. So in the medial aspect, we have got the ribs and we know that the ribs are get, uh, is having a cover of uh, which is uh, formed by the serratus anterior muscle. So this is forming the, uh, so here serratus anterior muscle has been shown and serratus anterior muscle is forming the 
medial border to be more specific axilla is uh, is formed by upper 4 and 5 intercostal spaces and that upper 4 and 5 intercostal spaces is covered by serratus anterior muscle so here this is exactly the rib and this rib is is covered by which muscle serratus anterior muscle so that means that means uh, this serratus anterior muscle is forming which boundary my dear aspirants this is forming the medial boundary correct you can also uh, imagine the same thing on your own body medially on the chest we have got on the chest we have got serratus anterior muscle if you remember i have taken one of the session of pectoral region where i have already explained the serratus anterior muscle origin insertion and we know that the ribs are covered uh, by uh, the serratus anterior muscle because serratus anterior muscle is taking origin from the upper eight or nine ribs okay so only upper four and five spaces uh, of the intercostal spaces which is covered by serratus anterior anterior muscle is forming medial boundary now posteriorly which bone is lying scapula this is the scapula which is forming the posterior boundary so posteriorly we have got the scapula bone and on the posterior aspect the scapula bone is forming the posterior boundary and it is having various muscles so it is covered by subscapularis muscle and also more posteriorly we have got this teres major muscle and latissimus dorsi muscle so actually teres major muscle latissimus dorsi muscle is having the attachment on this humerus bone but these are the muscle which is residing on the posterior aspect and inserting uh, towards the anterior aspect so these three muscle these three muscle that is the uh, scapula having subscapularis teres major and latissimus dorsi all these muscles all these muscle together forms the posterior wall or posterior boundary got it now now let's talk about the anterior one anterior one so when i am talking about anterior one so on an anterior aspect this is the anterior uh, boundary this chest is the anterior boundary and when we were uh, studying the pectoral region where we have seen the pectoral region is covered by the muscles that is pectoralis major and minor muscles so pectoralis major minor muscles are forming its anterior boundary actually and just below the clavicle in the clavicle in the subclavian groove we have got subclavis muscle so this pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis major muscle these whole muscles these whole muscles are forming okay these whole muscles are forming the anterior wall these are forming anterior wall now lateral wall remains what remains lateral so lateral wall is formed by the muscle uh, which is lying lateral wall is formed by the muscles which is lying over the upper aspect of the scap uh, of the humerus bone we have got the muscles in the arm that is coracobrachialis and biceps brachii muscle so see here these muscles these are uh, the biceps muscle and coracobrachialis muscle these muscles which is shown here so i would like to um, use brown color for it so these muscles which you are seeing these muscles are the muscles which is forming which wall lateral wall so these are all lateral wall muscles okay got it so we have done with the lateral wall anterior posterior medial wall now the contents which is residing inside so very nicely you can see the contents uh, are uh, here we have got aa what is aa this is the axillary artery so we have got av what is av so av is this that is the axillary wait and we have got the cords of brachial plexus so we have got p posterior cord lateral cord medial cord so these are all cords of brachial plexus so cords of brachial plexus if you will see in this diagram the cords of brachial plexus and axillary artery is covered by axillary sheath outside the axillary sheath we have got axillary vein and also one more nerve has been shown this is the nerve which is giving innervation to serratus anterior muscle this is nerve to serratus anterior this is what nerve to serratus anterior muscle so this single diagram so any doubt please let me know my dear aspen so since this single diagram is giving you the whole um, outline of the boundaries of the axilla the content of the axilla so let's study in detail so once more i will write uh, uh, quickly about the boundaries and the content so that you can revise it afterwards because 
uh, this you have to write in your exam you have to make the diagram so this all things are very very important for the first year aspirants to understand in detail so only they will understand the dissection also so only they will be able to understand the dissection so write down anterior wall anterior wall of axilla is formed by pectoral region muscles pectoral region muscles are pectoralis major muscle pectoralis major muscle just below pectoralis major muscle we have got pectoralis minor muscle and just in the groove of the clay uh, of the clavicle we have got subclavius muscle we have got subclavius muscle okay so this is what this is forming the anterior wall my dear aspirants now we will talk about posterior wall of the axilla posterior wall of the axilla okay so when i am talking about posterior wall of the axilla it is basically formed by following muscles the muscles are which we have seen in the posterior aspect in the scapula what are that muscle the muscles are subscapularis muscle subscapularis muscles in the upper part or above and lower down we have got two muscle one is teres major and the other is latissimus dorsi so lower down we have got teres major muscle and that of latissimus dorsi muscle so these two muscles are lying on the lower aspect or forming lying below and forming the lower part of posterior wall of the axilla now we uh, i i would like to define the medial and the lateral wall medial wall is having the bed seat of which muscle serratus anterior muscle so medially medial wall of axilla is formed by upper 4 and 5 intercostal spaces intercostal space and this intercostal space is covered by the digitations of which muscle serratus anterior muscle serratus anterior muscle okay and we have also seen that serratus anterior muscle uh, running over the serratus anterior muscle is getting the nerve supply that is long thoracic nerve but it is coming from inside so this is also the content okay now this is about the medial wall now which wall is remaining my dear aspirants the lateral wall so write down about lateral wall when we are talking about lateral wall the lateral wall of axilla is formed by tendon of biceps brachii muscle and coraco brachialis muscle coraco brachialis muscle and also the short head of biceps brachii short head of biceps brachii muscle short head of biceps brachii muscles so done with this so we have done with the um, walls now next what remains is the content so quickly we will also uh, summarize all the contents of axilla contents of axilla okay contents of axilla the contents of axilla are following it is mainly containing axillary fat it contains axillary lymph node and also inside axilla we have got axillary artery and its important branches so we will also discuss axillary artery in detail after writing this so axillary artery and its branches axillary vein and its tributaries axillary vein and its tributaries okay and uh, axillary vein and its tributaries other than that we have got uh, cords of brachial plexus cords of brachial plexus long thoracic nerve and intercostal brachial nerve inter costo brachial nerve intercostal brachial nerve 
okay now cords of brachial plexus i have not ta uh, taken the session about brachial plexus there i will explain this intercostal brachial nerve as actually is a is a lateral uh, cutaneous uh, it's a branch from the second intercostal nerve and it is forming a communication with medial cutaneous nerve of arm that is a branch of brachial plexus so it's a uh, clinical importance is there this is very important for mcq there is clinical importance of intercostal brachial nerve so don't worry let me firstly complete uh, complete the gross of it i will explain the uh, applied aspect about intercostal brachial nerve i will explain about the applied aspect of axillary vein and the other parts in the open house which i will conduct just after finishing the session of youtube okay so let's move with the um, cadaveric image so now i would like to show you this cadaveric image so let me just have thoda pani okay some water okay so see here a dissection uh, dissected a clean dissection view of axillary region has been shown to you so in this you can clearly explain that uh, here the part of anterior wall is still remaining intact so see here uh, okay uh, clavicular and sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle okay pectoralis major muscle below also the slipper pectoralis so these are what anterior wall these is forming the anterior wall of axilla now so these are the digitations medially these are the digitations and these are the digitations of which muscles these are digitations of serratus anterior muscle so you already know the digitations of serratus anterior muscle so the digitations of serratus anterior muscle is forming medial wall so this is medial wall mm, okay these are the part of latissimus dorsi muscle so on the posterior aspect the slip has been shown so this is p4 posterior wall okay posterior wall okay coraco brachialis muscle has been shown biceps brachii muscle has been shown so these coraco brachialis biceps brachii l for lateral wall so you can in this diagram you can see the part of uh, you can see the part of lateral wall so in this diagram you can see the part of uh, lateral wall you can see you can see the posterior wall part latissimus dorsi you can see the serratus anterior so this is the part showing you the medial wall so this is the part for the medial wall you can see the anterior wall pectoralis major and minor has been so okay so uh, we have got an idea of all the walls and here apex will be above it going towards the uh cervical region and lower down will be the basal aspect base now important contents uh, which can be visualized here so here axillary artery is very nicely seen so this is the axillary artery which you are seeing so axillary artery is a content axillary artery is a content other than that um, you can have the cords of brachial plexus okay this are medial and lateral root so these are actually what you uh, medial nerve is there so actually these are all cords of brachial plexus which is shown to you cords of brachial plexus okay so cords of brachial plexus is there axillary artery is there axillary vein uh, a part of it uh, it's exactly removed only it will lie medial to it so axillary vein axillary artery cords of brachial plexus are there and the walls can be seen here done okay so actually when you understand the theory part the dissection becomes easy and you understand the dissection very well so let's move with the other important topic that is axillary artery so let's move with our next top next important topic axillary artery so actually today i will uh, cover up the axillary artery and then brachial plexus remains axillary artery and axillary vein i will cover up then axillary uh, brachial plexus will be covered in the subsequent session in two or three sessions because it's a big topic and very important topic for the first year aspirants and also it's very important for the competitive exam in the next so we will discuss uh, brachial plexus gross detail and then also one of the session will be of applied or clinical anatomy of brachial plexus okay so let's talk about uh, axillary artery axillary artery is the main artery of the upper limb it's the most important or main artery of the upper limb it begins at the outer border of the first rib and actually it is a continuation of subclavian artery and lower uh, down at the lower border of teres major muscle it changes its name to brachial artery so that means at different territory it has got different name so arteries are a continuation of one another so if we talk about course or its origin so it's a continuation so it's a main artery of upper limb and it begins it begins at outer border of at outer border of first rib 
it begins at the outer border of first rib continues continuation of actually it is a continuation of subclavian artery it is a continuation of subclavian artery so at the outer border of the first rib it is a continuation of subclavian artery and it ends where does axillary artery end so it ends it ends at the lower border of teres major muscle it ends at the lower border of teres major muscle it ends at the lower border of teres major muscle okay so and there is also another important point which is important that pectoralis minor muscle when i was uh, taking this uh, session of uh, axillary reason uh, pectoral reason also i told you the pectoralis minor muscle is considered to be the key muscle of axillary region the reason is that it is dividing the axillary artery into three parts so let's see this image so see here let me and just enlarge this image and when we are enlarging this uh, when i am enlarging this image see here okay i have enlarged this image see here so when i enlarge this image you can have an idea here so first thing is that this is the subclavian artery what is this this is the subclavian artery no doubt subclavian artery a very important artery of the neck region subclavian artery okay in lower down if you want i will write it also this is subclavian artery which is written here also subclavian artery now at the level of outer border of the first rib what i told you at the level of first rib what is this this is the first rib this is what this is the first rib so from the level of the lower border of the first rib so till here so what does this means till here you can say till here it is subclavian artery only till here it is subclavian artery only and at the outer so what is the landmark this is the outer border of the first rib and this is the landmark from here the uh, the subclavian artery is changing its name to axillary artery and this part is called as the first part of axillary artery okay actually there is a uh, key structure which is not shown here here will be one muscle that is pectoralis minor muscle so this is the first part one more diagram i will show you that uh, so he this is the first part which is lying so here one muscle has not been shown so here will be one muscle so this will be the pectoralis minor muscle so just an outline i am showing you this will be the pectoralis in brown color blue uh, in brown color so actually this is what this will be the pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis minor muscle okay so this if this is the outline of the pectoralis minor muscle okay this is the hello hello rahul so this is the outline for the pectoralis minor muscle okay this is the outline for the pectoralis minor muscle and uh, here so that means the second part of the axillary artery is lying posterior the second part of axillary this is the second part of axillary artery if uh, uh, if you want to emphasize this is and this is lying p for this is lying posterior to axillary the first part lies proximal to pectoralis minor muscle the second part of axillary artery lies deep to pectoralis minor muscle and the third part of axillary artery lies distal to pectoralis minor muscle and ends at the level of it is ending at the level of the teres major muscle tm for teres major muscle got it okay so here will be the uh, here will be the teres major muscle here will be tm teres major muscle and from this level it will continue becoming ba for brachial artery it is written here also this is the brachial artery now now the branches from the first part is just one so just one branch from the first part and that one branch is so see here this is the one branch from the first part that is the superior thoracic artery from the second part we have got two branches and the two branches are one is the thoracoacromial artery okay uh, which is running uh, close to the upper border of pectoralis minor muscle which will again divide into four branches sprouting like a flower branches that is pectoral clavicular deltoid and acromial so these four uh, a b c d these four branches are of th or thoracoacromial artery the second branch is the lateral thoracic artery this is also a branch from the second part 
yes yes dear yes rahul gujjar it's a uh, thodaco acromial artery is the branch from the second part thodaco acromial artery is running close uh, posterior to actually uh, the branch the second part branch of axillary uh, the second part of axillary artery is posterior to pectoralis minor muscle and close to the superior border or upper border the four uh, branches of thodaco acromial artery is sprouting up close to the lower border we have got lateral thoracic artery and lateral thoracic artery is a branch also from the second part so together we have got till now three branches and if we talk about the third part the third part is giving so this is the third part and if i talk about the third part of uh, axillary artery it is giving subsequent branches the branches are posterior circumflex humeral anterior circumflex humeral and that of subscapular artery subscapular artery divides into two branches one is circumflex scapular and other is thoraco dorsal artery other is thoraco dorsal artery so 4 5 and 6 so how many branches total axillary artery is having six branches is um, giving six branches okay my dear aspen so i have explained it and one more diagram i will show you which will help you to understand so see this another diagram so after that see here subclavian artery okay subclavian artery to this is the first rib outer border will become which artery axillary artery so from the first part only one branch superior thoracic artery now this is pectoralis minor muscle and deep to pectoralis minor muscle is the deep to pectoralis minor muscle we have got the second part of axillary artery and second part of axillary artery is giving two branches this is thoraco acromial artery and this is the lateral thoracic artery close to the upper and lower border so can you see the sprouting of can you see the four branches sprouting from thoraco acromial artery so you can see a b c and d so what is it a b c d are acromial deltoid clavicular uh nitika soni ma'am ek bar repeat kar dijiye okay 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 so yes i will repeat it don't worry see here Uh, and no, so nitika soni just see here uh, this is subclavian artery okay so this is subclavian artery and this is the rib okay this is which rib this is the first rib this is the first rib see here this is first rib and this is subclavian artery now so at the outer border of the first rib subclavian artery is changing its name to subclavian artery is changing its name to it is forming axillary artery so from here to here so from here to here that is till the level so see here till the level of the outer till the level of pectoralis minor muscle superior border this becomes the first part of axillary artery and the first part of axillary artery is giving just one branch superior thoracic artery now this is the pectoralis minor muscle and just posterior to pectoralis minor muscle we have got second part of axillary artery and from the second part of axillary artery two branches are given one is thoraco acromial and other is lateral thoracic okay nikita soni so two branches from the second part now coming to the third part so third part is lying distal third part is lying lower or distal to pectoralis minor muscle and it is ending at the level of teres major muscle lower border it is ending at the level of lower border of teres major muscle and at this level it will change its name to the it will change its name to at this level it will change its name to brachial artery so from the lower border of teres major muscle it will change its name to brachial artery three branches from the third part that is anterior circumflex humeral posterior circumflex humeral and that of sub scapular artery the sub scapular artery one of the important branch is giving here this is circumflex scapular artery so circumflex scapular artery is a branch of sub scapular artery so how many branches so 1 2 and 3 and 3 total how many branches six total how many branches six is it okay nitika soni have you understood nitika have you understood nitika please let me know have you understood nitika nitika have you understood subclavian artery continues to become axillary artery at the level of subclavian artery continues to become axillary artery at the level of outer border of first rib till the level of pectoralis minor it is the first part of axillary artery posterior to pectoralis minor is the second part of axillary artery posterior to pectoralis minor is the second part of axillary artery and lower to pectoralis minor is the third part of axillary artery 
फर्स्ट पार्ट इज गिविंग वन ब्रांचेस सुपीरियर थोड़ासिक आर्टरीज सेकेंड पार्ट इज गिविंग टू ब्रांचेस लैटरल थोड़ासिक थोड़ाको एक्रोमियल आर्टरी थोड़ाको एक्रोमियल आर्टरी इज अगेन गिविंग फोर ब्रांचेस डेल्टोइड क्लाविकुलर पेक्टोरल एक्रोमियल नाउ third part is giving three branches anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery and the third one is subscapular subscapular artery is again dividing into two branches circumflex scapular and thoraco dorsal artery nitika soni have you understood i will write it also for you don't worry i will write it for you okay so yes extend now write down the heading branches of axillary artery branches of axillary artery branches of axillary artery okay so branches of axillary artery now coming to the first part so first part of axillary artery what i told you about first part of axillary artery so first part of axillary artery if i talk about first part of axillary artery first part of axillary artery is lying proximal first part of axillary artery is lying proximal to pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis minor muscle so you can say proximal or superior to pectoralis minor muscle so one branch is given only one branch is given from the first part of axillary artery only one branch from the first part of axillary artery what is the name of that artery can anybody remember nitika rahul kostup the first part of axillary artery just give one branch what is the name of that artery the name of that artery is superior thoracic artery superior thoracic artery and please my dear aspirant note down superior thoracic artery is also known as superior thoracic artery is also known as supreme thoracic artery supreme thoracic artery it is also known as supreme thoracic artery it is also known as supreme thoracic artery got it okay now coming to the second part of axillary so we have done with the first part next is second part of axillary artery okay now write down second part of axillary artery first part done now we will write down second part of axillary artery second part of axillary artery second part of axillary artery lies posterior to pectoralis minor muscle posterior to pectoralis minor muscle now the next point is branches from branches from the second part of axillary artery branches from the second part of axillary artery okay branches from the second part of axillary artery second part of axillary artery and now branches from the second part of axillary artery the second part branches are the second part of axillary artery is giving following branches so it gives two branches it gives two branches the first is thoraco acromial artery thoraco acromial artery the thoraco acromial artery is also called as acromio thoracic artery so please write down acromio thoracic artery both are similar please don't get confused acromio thoracic artery and thoraco acromial artery both are similar second part of axillary artery is giving two branches one is thoraco acromial artery and other is acromio thoracic artery both are similar the second part uh, and this one more branch is lateral thoracic artery lateral thoracic artery now i want to elaborate these two arteries and i want to add few more important points about both thoraco acromial artery and lateral thoracic artery okay 
so okay so so yes write down actually this lateral thoracic artery this lateral thoracic artery no acromial cavity no it is going towards the acromial process okay i will come rahul gujjar the four branches from thoraco acromial artery one of its branch acromial branch is going towards the acromial process of scapula it is going towards the acromial process of scapula lateral thoracic artery which is a branch from the second part it is an important it is a it is an important it is an important source of arterial supply to mammary gland so our mammary gland is getting blood supply an important source of blood supply is given by lateral thoracic artery so lateral thoracic artery is an important source of blood supply to mammary gland so this was the one artery what was the name of the other artery the other artery was thoraco acromial artery so thoraco acromial artery so this thoraco acromial artery will come out or pierces out it will it is the important branch from the second part of axillary artery it comes out it pierces clavi pectoral fascia if you remember clavi pectoral fascia has been done in pectoral region so it pierces clavi pectoral fascia and emerge out and emerges out giving four branches giving four branches now my dear aspen these four branches is very important actually these branches are given like uh, rahul if it is given the name acromial it means it is going towards the acromial process it is given the name clavicular means it is going towards the clavicle it is ha it has been given the name pectoral it is going towards the pectoral muscle okay so according to the direction of the branches the name has been given so how many four what are the name given to that uh, what are the name given to these branches the branches name is deltoid going towards the deltoid muscle pectoral going towards the pectoral one clavicular going towards the clavicle and acromial branch going towards the acromial process got it so when i am writing the word deltoid clavicular pectoral and acromial what does that means that the name of the four branches four branches actually these four branches uh, is like the sprouting of flowers uh from the second part of uh, from the second part of axillary artery thoraco acromial artery which is given at the superior border it is given at the superior border of pectoralis minor muscle and when it is sprouting out uh, after piercing the clavi pectoral fascia these four branches are sprouting out like a flower going in four direction the deltoid branch is going towards the deltoid process clavicular branch is going towards the clavicle pectoral branch is directed in the pectoral direction and the acromial branch is going towards the acromial process is it clear okay now let's move on to the third part of uh, axillary artery third part of axillary artery actually axilla i need one more class so uh, i will take one more class for the axilla theek hai third part of axillary artery okay third part of axillary artery third part of axillary artery so write down third part of axillary artery this part of, third part of axillary artery lies distal third part of axillary li artery lies distal to lies distal to which are which muscle pectoralis minor muscle it lies distal to pectoralis minor muscle it lies distal to pectoralis minor muscle okay now third part is giving following branches the third part is giving following branches following three branches the first branch is anterior circumflex humeral artery anterior circumflex humeral artery 
anterior circumflex humeral artery anterior circumflex humeral artery the second is posterior circumflex humeral artery posterior circumflex humeral artery okay posterior circumflex humeral artery in short form and actually why this anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery is very important because these two arteries is forming an anastomotic network it is forming an anastomo anastomosis around surgical neck of humerus so these two arteries are very important because these two arteries these two arteries are forming anastomosis around these two arteries are forming anastomosis around surgical neck of humerus surgical neck of humerus bone surgical neck of humerus bone okay so done surgical neck of humerus bone and what is the third part now what is the third branch i would like to write the name the third branch is subscapular artery subscapular artery now this subscapular artery again gives two branches so yes the subscapular artery again gives two branches so please write it about that okay so let's write the detail of subscapular artery subscapular artery again gives two branches subscapular artery which is a branch from the third part of axillary artery gives two important branches one is circumflex scapular artery which will pass through upper triangular space of uh, upper triangular space of the scapula and the other is thoracodorsal artery thoracodorsal artery so these are two branches from the subscapular artery these are two branches from the subscapular artery got it so have you understood everyone kostup rahul nitika sanjay pande okay so yes uh, okay that means i have to take one more session on the axilla I, uh, i actually wanted to explain relations axillary vein and also scapular anastomosis so i will take tomorrow one more session i will take on future doctor of uh, an academy where i will complete the whole of axilla and then we will start with the brachial plexus before that before ending few more important points so uh, don't worry i will complete this before that because i have to start a discussion of clinical anatomy of the axilla few points so before that i just want before ending i want to give you the information so clinical anatomy of axilla need some discussion so be connect with me so um, uh, okay so at 3 so just after ending the session you open the link on the anacademy app you will get the link for the open house uh, discussion so open house so it starts open house starts where on tele on telephonic conversation you can hear my voice and i will explain few clinical points of the axilla in just 10 to 15 minutes okay so be connected download the anacademy app if you have not downloaded until now and be connected there you will get uh, your yeah, mona lisa when you will search for you will get mona lisa uh, dr mona lisa anatomy and you can search you will get a open link uh, conversation and session you can get connected to me just after the finishing this session okay and also uh, i am taking two sessions on the let's crack neat pg platform two mcq session that is 7th uh, that is 8th and 9th so okay 8th and 9th session of uh, anatomy mcq wild anatomy mcq is targeted for the neat pg examination so be connected through that yes thoraco acromial artery sanjay pande is the branch of second part of axillary artery thoraco acromial artery is a branch of second part Yes, thoraco acromial artery is the branch from second part of axillary artery. So, okay, you want to show me that? Wait a minute. Okay, this is the uh, okay. This is the thoraco acromial artery. See here, and this is the branch of the second part, and it is giving four branches: A, B, C, and D. These are clavicular, deltoid, acromial, and pectoral. so we have already done thoracoacromial artery already okay so four branches sanjay pande 
we have done thoracoacromial artery if you have left out don't worry you can see afterwards also youtube session may it will be continuing to see you can continue to see so get connected download the unacademy app and get connected for my session of uh, free platform of unacademy or special free sessions on unacademy so get connected for high yield anatomy mcq series part 8 and 9 part 8 and 9 okay so the students who are downloading the app for the first time the students who are downloading the app for the first time use the code anat 10 so use and unlock code and add 10 and be present live for the session and add 10 also all india mock test is going to happen those who want to uh, be the part of this free session free session so use the code and add 10 and enroll for this free mock test enroll get enroll on all india mock test on the unacademy platform absolutely free get enrolled by using the code and add 10 now have in comparison of plus and iconic subscription pricing detail has been shown to you the pricing detail of the plus and iconic has been shown to you so this will help you to decide which uh, subscription you have to take whether you have to take the plus or iconic a pricing detail use this code and add 10 to get an extra discount and be the part of plus subscription of unacademy so all the best keep studying thank you and now you will get connected to me for the open house conversation and discussion so get connected to me for the open house conversation right itself i am going to start and be connected for me for the 4 pm and 5 pm session of special free sessions and unacademy classes on the unacademy free platform so that is also highly beneficial for you. Okay, Sanjay Pandey, Rahul Gujjar, Nitika, everyone, Kostup, Dr. Kostup. Okay, thank you. All the best. Keep studying. And on special classes, you can download the PDF notes also. So I will discuss clinical points about the axilla in the open house session. Thank you. Thank you.